In 2012, Hurricane Sandy struck the east coast of the United States. In New York, 53 people died, while thousands were left homeless from fires and flooding. Roads and subways were underwater. Lower Manhattan was hit the hardest, and the New York City Council took action to prevent future flooding. It was derived out of the Rebuild by Design competition following Hurricane Sandy, sponsored by HUD and the Rockefeller Foundation. So they asked 10 teams to come up with ideas to protect not just Lower Manhattan, but actually the whole East Coast. The Arca Ingalls Group, along with other design collaborators, came up with a, a concept called the Big U, which was one of the winning design schemes. And rather than just put a fortification around the entire Lower Manhattan, we felt very strongly that it needed to, to uh, serve the people who are living there and the people who work there. So uh, our design wove these two ideas together into what we think will be a beautiful and habitable landscape that happens to be really pragmatic too. I think what's really inspirational about our idea and in our design is that we utilize flood protection as a means of social infrastructure. So effectively, the park is providing flood protection for the communities along lower Manhattan. The main client is the city of New York, so we work across Various community groups, uh, over 100,000 residents are involved in, through different community organizations, and we work with them to effectively communicate the design. The scale of the project is huge. It's one of the largest projects that the city has done in probably 50 years. During the Big U process, a lot of community groups were involved in workshops, so the design team would take multiple proposals to them, kind of play with different models or drawings and get a ton of feedback. It's involved a lot of trying to integrate ideas, mediate between the different client groups, if you will, the public and the city, and uh, then communicate visually. In my experience in the past, I've seen how Lumion has been used to communicate design ideas to the public and as as a growing trend with uh, representation of design comes animations, and I think it was a perfect software for representing the animation capabilities of the project. For people who aren't used to seeing these images, something like a huge model or an animation that really shows the entire project in one take or one swoop is super helpful. So to be able to visualize it all at once in one continuous animation, we thought would be a very valuable ad. It was pretty amazing to see kids pointing and looking at the video and being able to understand the entire thing much better. And people really being able to kind of look at the animation and talk to us and feel like they understood a lot better what's coming for them. Even where we have to have flood wall and floodgates, there's intense design attention that's paid to that so that it becomes a nice urban experience and not just a necessary infrastructure. I think being able to communicate the different storm scenarios was really helpful because in the past we've always shown kind of beautiful sunny day renderings um, that were pretty static alongside a, a rainy day rendering and you never saw how the park can actually perform. So using the different kind of weather sequences in an animation, for example, was pretty helpful for us. We'd like to show the park in all of its seasonal conditions and all of its weather conditions. We were able to do a small series of flood scenarios for concentrated moments. I think it would be valuable to show the overall park experiencing something like that. I saw people genuinely excited about the different kind of floodgates being deployed and seeing the water rise. And I think the length of the animation, because the park is so huge, people really got to understand the scale and the nature of this project. So I think it was kind of like an awe-inspiring moment for a lot of people when the animation was finished. You know, parents would be pointing to kids, oh, that's where we ride bikes. It's going to be like that in the future. We're going to be able to ride bikes, you know, along the river again. That's what we do, kind of recognize themselves in the project. I think it, being able to use a video clip or an animation to, to show the design, not only just the design, but the scale of the project and any project in the future is, is really important. So the ease of being able to share our information and communicate it across the city, across the U.S. and across the world is really helpful. I think the amount of super severe storms every year is increasing and it seems like every year there's another storm that's more severe than in the previous year, so the, there's a huge sense of urgency for projects like this to protect vulnerable populations 
in the very short term. We can't just build walls around our communities uh, for sea level rise and climate change. We have to make them places that people want to hang out in and inhabit. So how can we get projects like this built? faster in order to protect communities sooner. How can we use different resources and materials that don't add or contribute to global warming? 